Hello and welcome back to our new Rage Gaming video. My name is Hollow and it's time to talk some more Rise. I covered all seven weapon showcases that were recently released almost all at once and my god the amount of information that was just piled on us in these short few minute videos was pretty insane. Inside of these videos we saw new core gameplay for many weapons like for example how the hammer has a slightly changed charge system while also seeing two siltbind attacks for each and every weapon on top. Naturally some of these siltbind and attacks were a bit more impactful and impressive than others and of course not every weapon did actually see core gameplay changes. I thought it would be a fun idea to talk about my picks for the winners and yes unfortunately a couple losers from these showcases. But here's a really important disclaimer before we get into it. It is fine if you don't agree with me and also we might not have actually seen everything for each new weapon yet these are just from the showcases that they have shown us so far let's get started then with a positive note we'll start with my runner-up winners from the 14 weapons starting with rage's favorite the great sword the great sword did so well in rise as a heavy hitting weapon that requires charge up time aerial hits are pretty much a dream when you can use them abusing ledge jumps for a quick charged aerial hits in world was huge the dps you could rack up if a monster was standing near a ledge was great well, in Rise, we have the new wire bugs that allow us to leap into the air whenever we want. Therefore, a greatsword user doesn't need a ledge anymore. You can use a wire bug to plunge attack whenever you damn well please. So, to say the least, any heavy hitting charge up weapon will benefit from that. But the greatsword comes in with the hunting edge, the new silt bind attack, where they flip forward, bounce up even higher, and then perform that classic charge plunge attack from up high. Basically, Aerial Greatsword gameplay is back, and this time it is more than just viable. Plus, you know, don't forget their new self buff Siltbind attack, the Power Sheath, is going to be extremely useful too. Greatsword users will plan their attacks carefully, right? Where they charge up their hits and combos in an ideal position to then try to get a true charge hit and smash that poor monster. With that Power Sheath, you can now pre prep to another level with the extra attack power that it'll give you. Both the impact of the Wirebug aerial movement and those those new Siltbind attacks give Greatsword more options irrelevant of the area you're fighting in, leaving this powerhouse of a weapon free to go ham all the time anywhere. You know, don't forget the improvements from Will do come across like the shoulder bashes back for that clutch immunity or the ability to true charge now off a swipe, which makes swipe much more relevant in your average gameplay. So it's got core improvements, better utility, new mechanics, I think the Greatsword wins big time in Rise. And yeah, obviously, Josh is pretty happy about this. So congrats to him and you Greatsword users. But let's continue speaking of winners as we talk about our next runner-up for the best weapon update in Rise. This time, we're talking Hammer. Yep, it looks like both Rage and Cotton got very lucky because, as I said, any slow and powerful weapon will benefit greatly in Rise thanks to the new Wirebug movement. Hammer is no exception, especially after what we saw in Iceborne. I've been playing Iceborne Hammer recently myself Myself, and I've got to say, those flips, the slides, it's so good. And it's just going to be even better in Rise. But what's really special and why Hammer is a bit of a big winner this time is due to the core improvements to its kit. The awkward detail of a Hammer in World is how when you're charging up an attack, you have to stand still before releasing a 3 charge to prevent the awkward and not so useful spin attack that triggers when you're moving. This forces you to stop before you actually continue attacking and that feels, well, clunky. In Rise, things have changed for the better. We now see that three charge attack can be released from movement, which is going to be a lot nicer, and the spin attack will trigger in a new way. It looks like it's either by charging up just once and then releasing, or perhaps by standing still before releasing the attack. Whichever it is, you will now need to be a bit more intentional when you want to use the spin, and therefore it's going to be much rarer that you accidentally trigger the spin compared to World's version of the hammer. But you know what? That spin might actually be worth using now. The big bang combo in which you bonk the monster ideally on the head five times always ends in that big huge damaging hit, right? It'd be great if we could skip to that final huge hit somehow. Well, in Rise we can. Off of a spin, you can combo straight into that final fifth hit 
for its huge damage, meaning we could be in Rise spinning around more commonly to deal damage and obviously moving at the same time to avoid incoming blows, then cap that spin off with the final big hit of the Big Bang combo, hopefully square in the face of the monster for a knockdown. And that's what I'm talking about. Hammer did so well in its core gameplay improvements. I haven't even talked about the Siltbind attacks and look how well it's done already. But then its Siltbind attacks are also some of the best. Firstly, we have Spinning Bludgeon, which has us charging up via a Y bug, then flipping into the air. That is the awesome flip from, say, Slides or Clutch Claw in Iceborne. But now it's newly added as an attack that we can use at any time. And it's even better than just that, because the Anjanath seems to hit the Hunter during that wind up, that charge of the leap, and the Hunter just ignores it. So it seems like the charge up time will grant you at the least a knockback immunity. That is really good. And secondly, mother of god, Impact Crater is one of the most satisfying new animations we're seeing in Rise. The hammer user will leap up into the air, smashing the monster with an uppercut hit, and then come plunging back down for multiple hits and a devastating crater creating attack. Need I say more? Hammer is a massive winner in Rise, and it was this close to being the number one. Now we've talked about two winners, why don't we talk about those losers? Because yep, yeah, we do have a couple. Firstly, the Light Bowgun. While the light version of the Bowgun is still a personal favorite of mine, I have to admit, compared to what we saw from, say, the Hammer or the Greatsword, it did not compete in these showcases. The Pierce ammo being shown in the footage was doing some serious work. The wonderful slide movement is back, and yeah, personally, I really like the mine mechanic. But what can I say beyond that? Everything we've been shown in the core gameplay isn't exactly new or improved, it's just more of the same. The new Siltbind Glide, where you leap forward and unleash a powerful close range attack, which also does severing damage apparently. Well, yeah, this attack looks great, but the delay after you use it will leave you very vulnerable. You fall back from the explosion and then slowly reload that gun, which holds you in place for a dangerous period. So you better hope you stagger that monster with the attack. A little underwhelming. However, where the light bow gun did do well was that second Siltbind attack, the Fanning Vault, which provides some new aerial movement. We leap into the air and then can choose to fire some shots as we fly by, or reload while on the move, or fire the Wyvern Blast, aka the mine, straight down. In this case, the mine will actually stick to the monster and explode, which is really cool. We get to pretend we're the B-52 bomber and fly by on our foes. This one move, the Fanning Vault, does give the light bow gun some new options and utility, and therefore I don't pin it as the worst update out of all the weapons, but I definitely felt like it didn't see enough love in this showcase at least. Hopefully we get to see some more effects of, say, other ammo types, and if they're improved at all in Rise. But our second loser in this video, and in my opinion, the one that disappointed me the most, well, it's gotta be the Insect Glaive. I think a lot of us are gonna agree on this one. The Insect Glaive appeared to have no new mechanics or updates to its core gameplay. The usual combos and usual movement were shown with no major improvements. Hell, even one of its two Siltbind attacks was just a new leaping spin for more aerial movement. The Insect Glaive didn't really need that. It does give you another way to stay in the air a bit longer though, but the awkward reality of that is that in World, you often wanted to go to the ground for a big melee combo, so staying in the air even longer wouldn't necessarily be the best choice. Hopefully, in Rise, the aerial damage will have been improved, so maybe it's more worth it to stay in the air longer and keep fighting from up high, and it's undeniably very cool to spin around and dash in the air and fight a monster while you are up in the air for ages. So if it's more worth it damage wise to do that then yeah that could be great the glaive should be really fun in rise but that second silt bind attack the recall of your kinsect will now provide a heal effect and recover the kinsect stamina fully when it returns this will let you maintain your buffs and keep the kinsect out for a bit longer but damn this is an underwhelming effect, at least in my eyes. Instead of, say, giving the Kinsect a cool, new, unique attack, like, say, oh, I'm gonna have the Kinsect target the monster's eyes, and then that'll blind it for a moment. Or, I don't know, maybe with specific types of Kinsects, I could use it like a shield and counter-attack with it. All we really got was an improved recall. Again, I am really hoping that there's more to see for the Insect Glaive, and there's more to see for the weapons after these showcases. So, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, that that aerial damage is better, but I find myself very disappointed. But enough of that negativity, why don't we talk about the true winner of Rise? Can I get a drum roll please? The winner of the Rise Weapon Showcase is the weapon with the best updates and improvements. Well, it has to be the Hunting Horn. 
Mother of God, the Hunting Horn did so well. Not only with the new Silk Binder text, but the core gameplay improvements and its visuals and animations are top of the pack. With the return to the older style of weapons and armor, the Hunting Horn is back with new, interesting designs. This awesome guitar shown in the showcase was a clear example of that. But in the older games like GU, I saw so many crazy hunting horns that simply never existed in world with its more realistic and toned down approach. And then also we have those new incredible animations. The spinning of the hunting horn, the dancing mid-combat, the air burst coming from the horn as it plays those notes. And God, the flips and leaps the hunter is actually doing too. If that was all there was to say about the hunting horn, then hell, it would have done really well. But let's talk core improvements. The Hunting Horn is a heavy hitter, right? So yeah, it's another one that benefits from plunge attacks with the new Wirebug movement, which is great. But the multi-hit combos now seem to have more burst effects to them. The explosions in the air, which are actually pretty high up as well. So that's great range to hit bigger monsters. But visually, there's that new sphere of notes shown off on new performances too. We see the return of the Echo No, which spins the Hunting Horn for a very satisfying attack. But more subtly, we see attacks cancelled to pull out of combos if you do them wrong or want to move around. And before we even saw these showcases, we learned that we're going to be able to draw the Hunting Horn into various attacks. Instead of the same note on draw, you can choose, letting you instantly go into the performance of your choice across the board. This is a huge quality of life update for the Hunting Horn. It looks great visually and mechanically. It's going to be a much more smoother experience. And we haven't even talked about the Silk Bind attacks, man. Slide Beat has us dive forward, spinning as we do flips and smacks in a huge combo, resulting in a status boost at the end, and you're totally invulnerable to knockback while you're actually leaping forward. So not only does this look great, but also provides that status effect and looks like it's going to pack a serious punch too. Absolutely brilliant. But dude, that second Silt Bind attack, this is the winner for me. This is the best animation I've seen in all of the gameplay of Rise so far. The Earthshaker will attach a iron silk blade to the monster, connecting this thread between the hunting horn and the enemy. Then playing a air shattering note, the silk shoots up with a killing red and bursts into this powerhouse of a note you can literally see in the air, doing huge damage and staggering monsters. The hunter will just hang out like a rock star while the monster feels that pain. God, it's just, it's just so good. Despite being my least played weapon in my time playing Monster Hunter, I must say, I know I'm going to be playing Hunting Horn in Rise at least a little bit whenever I'm ready for like an alternative weapon. Rise took the Hunting Horn and made it sore. To me, this is the clear winner of these showcases. So, a huge congrats to you, Hunting Horn mains. I hope you guys can see where I'm coming from with my thoughts about these weapons, though. Let me know what you thought. But frankly, I don't know what I'm going to do in Rise, man. I am a longsword main, but so many weapons look so good. I don't know what I'm going to do, whether I should try main something different or what. Do you know what you're going to be playing? For now, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I've been Hollow. You've been you. And I'll see you next time.